All right, Cakes, how's it? That, <laughs> is that uh, time of the show where we introduce our guest, of course, for our first guest of season two, a man who goes by many names, Casper. Uh, yeah. Casper the ghost. Casper the not so friendly ghost. <laughs> You're not supposed to know that. Uh, no. Big Red. Ooh, I like that. Mr. Majestic, apparently, we heard just before. Yeah. But you all know him, Yannis yeah. Gerson. Yannis, thank you so much for joining us. Um, first of all, you obviously aren't on tour with the boys, one of our marquee signings. We saw you come here in crutches, foot in a cast. Just let us know, uh, update on the injury. Yeah, no, um, game over here. Uh, Pre-season started well. Uh, training really went well. And then um, I think five weeks into pre-season, we had a little mauling session and uh, I hurt my foot. Uh, initially, didn't think it was too serious. Uh, you know, the initial scans showed it's just a minor sprain. And uh, then I kept on training, kept on training with a little bit of rehab, uh, tried to get it right, and then uh, it didn't get any better. And then I went for some uh, second opinions, saw a specialist, and yeah, unfortunately, uh, they had to do some surgery on it. Uh, uh, it wouldn't get better by itself. And yeah, it's unfortunately one of those things, not a great start to the season. <laughs> Yeah it's, it's, yeah, it's quite sad, you know, coming over and, and uh, looking forward to get back into the Bulls jersey. Uh, but yeah, it's, it's uh, a few month injury, but hopefully we can speed it up and uh, I'll be back before the end of the season. Yeah, yeah. yeah let's hope. And, and speaking of coming back, you know, you, you're a proper son oh, of yeah. Loftus of Pretoria. You know, you grew up here, schooled at Uffies, uh, went to Turks played junior or under-19, under-21 at the Vodacom Bulls, a couple of seasons with the Vodacom Bulls um, before going to Japan, and now, now you return. What is this, this club, this fan base, the city? What does all of that mean to you? Yeah, no, I mean, you, you summarized it quite well there. I mean, I've, I've lived in Pretoria all my life, went to school just over across the street, university. Uh, you know, growing up as a boy, I think there was a, I can go and look for the picture, but as a, Young boy, I think I was six or seven. I was here at Loftus supporting, and then I held up like a sign on the pavilion. It was a hot day. I <laughs> had this big hat on, and uh, and then someone took a picture, and uh, it was in the build, like on the Monday or something, uh, in the newspaper the, the next week. And then someone phoned and asked. Um, it, it was some kind of competition. I, I and then I won some prize money. Oh, then, yeah, yeah, and then, you know, well, I was in my Bulls jersey and, you know. What do you so, do with the money? Do you remember? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, my parents <laughs> yeah, saved it awesome. for me. No, yeah, I had no say in it. Yeah, investment. I invested in the Bulls. Oh, didn't get no, sweets. in my rugby. No, uh, so, yeah, was, I mean, growing up, yeah, all I ever wanted to do was play for the Bulls. And, uh, yeah, it was a dream come true. And uh, you know, I always said my, my blood is blue. And, uh, yeah, it's, 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 it's really good to be back. And, yeah, it's... it's part of who I am, the Bulls. Yeah, yeah, yeah I did, because I was reading an article about how, you know, um, you and your dad, you dad to get season tickets and you'd come and watch your brother play, like from a young age, you know, even when the Bulls won the 2010 um, Super Rugby, you know, you speak about how you came out of Afis on the open bus tour to go meet your heroes. Like, take us back to that time. Yeah, well, that's what, yeah no, that's, I mean, in Pretoria, I mean, we spoke about it the other day, is if, if there's not rugby on Saturdays or Fridays or whenever, you know, on weekends, what, what do you do? And uh, that's why I say it's, it's part of who we are. Well, my family at least, you know, it's, it's what we look forward to every weekend. And uh, yeah, as growing up, we would go over to office. I wasn't, we, well, my brother was five years older than me. And uh, obviously he went to office first. Uh, we'd go there on Saturdays. We'd go and do a barbecue there before we come over. Um, always, never missed a game really. And uh, yeah, we, I think we watched all the finals, the Super Rugby finals. Never missed any of that, and um, then uh, later on, my brother came over to the Bulls, and you know, obviously very proud, uh, and that's all I really wanted to do. Is you know, he was really such an inspiration for me to you know keep working hard, and the type of advice and stuff he I got back then. To to obviously he he learned a few lessons along along the way, and uh, that kind of uh, took off a lot of pressure. Well, him being at the Bulls put a lot. Of put pressure on me to also, you know, you, you also want to be, perform like him one day. And, uh, but it also took off some pressure in, in the way he said, no, don't worry about this, don't worry about do this, do that. You know, that my path was much more smoother, I reckon, than his. Yeah, but uh, yeah, so uh, back in those days, yeah, he was, he was kind of my mentor, him and my dad. And 
uh, yeah, no, and uh, then it worked out well. So yeah, I was literally going to ask. So far, yeah, I was literally going to ask you about mm. about your brother Frick, but you just literally yeah. summed it up about like how, you know the yeah. impact he had in your life, and you know, and it's so unfortunate that he got that injury, and like you know, yeah, yeah. he was really took uh, to be a top player, you know. Yeah, no, I think um, he obviously so he played. He was a flanker, lock, up until the age of 16, and then uh, when he went under 17, you know, when he started playing open teams. You know, he got heavier because, I mean, I think at under 16, he was already like 110 kgs. And then, you know, my dad said, listen, are you, you gonna, if, you're, if you're heavy this now, you know, he's quite tall, he's 193. Uh, you know, you're going to become too heavy for, for loose foot and he's too short for to lock, really. And um, so he said, no, you know, my uncle played prop, you know, he, and he had quite a similar build. He said, no, you know, we need to move you to, to prop. And then... The coaches said, no, you're making a mistake, whatever. But then, yeah, it, it, he, he got a lot of coaching. And uh, under 17, he moved to tight head prop. And, uh, yeah, it, I mean, he, he, soon after that, I think he hit 120 kgs, you know. And it, it was a great move. And, uh, you know, he did well. He played Kramen Week two years in a row. I think he played SA Schools, no, SA Academy under 17 and under 18 SA Schools, you know, tight head prop. So... It was a great move for him, and then he came to the Bulls and, uh, you know, did well. But then I think he, he injured his neck, and he was out for a couple of months, came back. Uh, everything went well, and I think he, he went on tour of the Springboks yeah. for a week in, in, in France. Uh, you know, it was this close, and then the season ended, and then the next season started, and, uh, yeah, then, then he properly, then he did another neck injury. And uh, yeah, it was just yeah, just uh, pretty, uh, the obviously medical advice was you know very risky. Yeah, for this, it's uh, a lot of props get it, but uh, yeah, he he just got too. He was just too bad. I suppose once the neck go, I mean, as a prop, yeah. that's that's your bread and butter yeah. right there. It's a tough, yeah, it's like I say, a lot of props get that similar type of injury. It's when your disc pop and it presses against your um, uh, neural or your. I don't, don't look at me about yeah, the yeah, whatever, 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 whatever. Yeah. You know, they have to do a fusion, and they say it kind of makes the neck stronger, but then he popped in another few, and, uh, you know, it was just too severe. Yeah, so now it's... But, I mean, he still had a great time, and uh, he, he played super rugby, and he toured the world, you know, and the, the opportunities he got was incredible, and, uh, yeah. That, that must have motivated mm. you so much more. Yeah, yeah. no, in, in terms of that, you know, he said, <laughs> you know, rugby is kind of like a fairy tale. He always thought it was work, until he had to start working, you know, afterwards. <laughs> yeah. 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 So uh, he said, no, he, rugby is not a work. It's, it, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a great game and it's, you, know, you should enjoy it as much as possible while you can still play it. So, um, yeah, and, and luckily he um, went to study, uh, you know, straight after school. I think my dad was quite, he was quite strict on saying, listen, yeah, you can play rugby, but first just get some type of qualification behind your name, you know, because you can't play rugby forever. It's going to end sooner or later, and, um, and uh, it's, it's not like football. I mean, a lot of football players, you know, just the, the amount of money they make during their career is, is ridiculous compared to, if you compare it to rugby, and there's a small percentage of rugby players that's able to, you know, never have to work again. I've, only the top, top players, I reckon, and, uh, you know, but most, most of the time, you know, you still got to have a career after rugby in whatever, so, you know, my dad, Pushed us to do that, and, and look, the, my my brother got a career-ending injury, and uh, I mean that's a great example of you know luckily had his qualification to fall back on after rugby. So yeah. But just to go back a little bit, you mentioned your brother playing two years of Craven Week. Am I correct in saying you didn't play Craven Week? No, no, I. Yeah, so my brother, he was he was a bit of an early developer. He played Craven Week from under 12 right through, you know, Grand Como, everything, and uh, me, I. So I was still, when I was 14, 15, I was still short and, you know, I didn't really develop. And then as soon as I hit uh, under 15, I, one year I grew um, 15 centimeters. Jeepers. And then uh, uh, picked up 15 kgs, you know. And then the year after, I, uh, I, I grew another 14 centimeters and picked up 14 kgs. So for every centimeter I grew about a kg, you know. And, then within two years, I, I grew 30 centimeters, basically. And uh, yeah, so I was a bit of a late developer. You know, uh, 
I remember under 16, we were playing a game. I was playing under 16 C or D. Oh, and, uh, also, so, so, so yeah. you played under 14, under 16, where you're like in the season D's. Yeah, right? yeah, oh, yeah. Wow. So, you know, and then uh, I, I remember under 16, you know, then you basically, you, your bones grow too fast for your muscles. And I was skinny and like a, a giraffe, you awkward, know, yeah. running, awkward, falling over my own feet. And then we played a team, I got the ball, and it was an open try line. All I had to do is run and score, and then I ran and boop, tripped oh, over my own no. feet. And then they caught up to my nose. Yeah, <laughs> Didn't yeah. get to the face, falling over your Everybody, feet. you know, it wasn't, everybody just laughed. Nobody went like, oh, you know, they just started laughing. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, so then, yeah, um, uh, because I grew so fast, um, under 17, I never played rugby because I had, they, go, they call it Osgood Slatter syndrome. It's when in your knees, when you grow too fast, your, your bones grow too fast, so your ligaments kind of grow slower and it rips loose from your bone. And then, you know, it's very painful. It's a, a growth pains, you know, basically. And uh, yeah, I couldn't play um, under 17 and because it was just too sore and um, the doctor's advice was, you know, take the year off. Uh, uh, you know, let, you settle into your body first, and then um, yeah. So that year was actually it was kind of a blessing in disguise because I, I, I was able to uh, spend a lot of time in gym. You know, de develop myself physically, and uh, yeah, I kind of grew into my body. And then, uh, luckily, my trick, I uh, I came back and uh, I was able to play again. Yeah. Yeah. So first, yeah. So obviously, I was quite quite nervous. You know, not playing for a whole year. And uh, then under 16, you played lower teams. What was that year uh, of sorted you? Yeah, and then, um, you know, and then, you know, pressure's on because you're last year in school. And obviously, you know, from here on, it's, it's, it's either you make or break, you know, and, uh, and you want to play like your older brother. And uh, yeah, and, uh, luckily, uh, with the trials, you know, I was, then by then, I was 193, 194, you know, compared to, Two, three years ago, I was one seven or one six or something. You know, a completely new body, and I uh, know, uh, uh, yeah, worked out well. Yeah. well. Was there a lot of pressure on you um, because of your brother in terms of? T -t -t no, well, for me personally, yeah. but from their side, nothing. You know, they said, "Listen, yeah, you're a late developer. Don't worry, you'll grow into others." It's like my dad also. I'm, I'm very similar to my dad. Uh, he was also a late developer, and he always said, "Don't worry," because obviously, under 14, 15, you want to play. A team, and you're like, oh, my brother played 18. What's you know, I'm the weakling in the family, or <laughs> you know. But then they didn't ever pressure me, and you know, said just give it time. You know, work on your skills, work on other stuff you can control, like gym work, and make sure you're fit. You know, work on that. The the, the rest will come if you, if you keep on working. You know, what a meteoric rise. I mean, from under 16 playing C and D, then yeah. taking a year off, and then playing first team, that's incredible. But I did hear one story, so just to fast forward a bit, you're now playing um, for Tux, but you're also playing for the Vodacom Bulls simultaneously, correct? Yes, so obviously under 19, you come here, there's 70 guys in the squad, you know, you get, oh, the, the competition is crazy. And then, you know, you realize, well, it's, uh, mm -hmm. it's good to study. And uh, luckily, because um, um, those days, uh, they changed the rules, you know, you need to get a certain amount of credits to, to play for the, University, and uh, I, I kept on studying. I, I, I passed my exams and whatever. And then uh, on a 20, you know, under 19, I didn't, I didn't play a lot. I went to play for, you know, the under 19 Tux team to get some games. I even played. Uh, I was in Mopani in residence uh, first year. Well, my first to, th to third year, I was uh, in there, and I, pl I played Mopani rugby um, because I, oh, I played some under 19 games, but. You know, competition was tough. I, I didn't always get selected. And uh, luckily, on a 20, uh, because I kept on studying, I, you know, I had enough credits and uh, I got it. Um, um, well, first year, there was a lot more guys playing on the 20s. And then the second year, the, there was a lot less because, uh, I don't know, guys didn't keep on studying or they didn't have enough credits. So I, I was able to... Uh, you know, then I got my chance, really, played under 20 varsity cup, we won that year. And then from there, well, I had a pretty good season. And uh, uh, we played the final, and then just after the final, there was, I think, Marvin Ori got injured because the uh, Junior World Championship was in that June. We played, I mean, what was the final? April, maybe. 
and um, March, April, and um, then I got a call up to the under 20s because Marvin got in injured. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, if right time, right place, really. You know, it's unfortunate for Marvin, but look where he is now. Yeah, you know? World Cup winner, yeah. You know, he missed on that, but now he's a World Cup champion, you know, so. How was that yeah, experience eh, to be at an international tournament? You know, at, at yeah, no, that was, you know, things changed quickly, yeah. And, uh, yeah, it was, uh, no, that was, that was nice, yeah. It was a lovely year that year. We, we played in France and, yeah, we even toured to Argentina for warm up games. So, yeah, no, that was quite an experience, yeah. So things can change quickly. So I've got a, a story actually. Our, um, Chanil Munguru was the media manager at the time, told me the story that you were playing, um, and I think you're playing under 19. No, 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 you were playing first team, uh, senior team rugby for the Bulls. I can't remember who you were playing against, and you won man of the match in this game. And you, you were going to the press conference and you asked the coach, you asked the coach, can I still play for Varsity <laughs> Cup on Monday? Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah, that was, I think, um, um, yeah, that was 2016. I think I, this my, the year I started playing Super Rugby, I made my debut. And uh, Coach Puerto Iman was still at Varsity Cup. And obviously, I played Varsity Cup 2014, 2015. And uh, he, he kept, because I like Coach Bert, and uh, he kept asking me, you know, how's things looking there? Are you able to play? Or, and uh, I don't know, because I, I, my expectation for that year was I'm going to play Varsity Cup, you know. And, uh, and then I think also maybe one or two injuries and suddenly, you know, you're in the mix to play Super Rugby. And uh, yeah, I got my chance and I was always thinking, oh, OK, but I'm actually going to play Varsity Cup this year. You know, I was lucky to, to play Super Rugby that year, and then, yeah, well, yeah, never, I never got to play World Cup that year again, but I, the lucky, yeah, it was a great season. I played, I think, every match in the Super Rugby that season, yeah, so, yeah, it was, uh, so, yeah, it's, uh, it's, you know, I was still studying at that stage, you know, so I was thinking, you know, student, play, play World Cup, and uh, well, I got my chance, and, yeah, it was, a, it was a nice season after that, yeah. Yeah, so, I just wanted to ask, um, so you moved to Japan, right? And I don't know quickly uh, that, that your time in Japan. You got five appearances, I think. I don't think. Um, why did you only play? No. Five? Yeah. So yeah, I went to. This is the Blitz, yeah. right? The Blitz, yeah. Yeah, yeah. The 2018, I went to Toyota the Blitz, where Jake, Jake, Coach Derek was the, was the coach there. So yeah, I went over, and then obviously the, the Japan rules at that time was because I played under 20, at that stage, if you they made the the South Africa registered the under 20s as their second national team and we played against France that, that also did that at that time so I was basically internationally capped after we played uh, uh, France so I wasn't allowed to play in for any other country and in Japan they got the uh, rules on the for amount of foreigners that can play in the starting lineup I think it's only five and only two international guys so uh, at that time it was Jason Jenkins and Gio Aplon was also at Toyota and I was the third guy really internationally so uh, you know, I, I didn't play any of the uh, top league, but then the five games I played was the Japan Cup. And uh, yeah, that, that's where I got my chance. They didn't really have those uh, cap players, you know, the, the regulations of that. So I played there, yeah. yeah. It's quite interesting for me because when I see players um, come, they come back from Japan, you know what I mean? Their, their skill level is like exponentially better, I, I, I think. Do you think uh, that they really focus on like the, the skills training yeah. in Japan? No, like, they... they the, yeah, Japan, the Japanese, oh, it's, a, it's a great country, you know, they are so professional and so focused and hard working, you know, so it's, 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 you get different benefits going there, you know, it's like you say, they, every day after training, you, you can almost say they're like um, uh, robots, you know, they go and train extra skills and do all kinds of extra stuff, so it's a great time to develop your, yourself there, and obviously I didn't play a lot, so, you know, then you can spend a bit more time in the gym and work on your, your weaknesses or whatever. And, uh, yeah, no, but they, they, it's not like we do less here, but, um, you know, it's, uh, so uh, I think you also play a kind, different kind of game there, you know, the, the, just the type of players you got there and whatever. So, yeah, skills, definitely some big, big focus over there, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so then you leave Japan and you go to Devon, right, to, to play for Exeter. No, so I came back from Japan and then 2019 um, still played Super Rugby. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I came back from Japan and then still at the start of the 2019 season. Um, uh, yeah, and then from we finished the season, I think we made quarters that year against yeah, Hurricanes. We played there, but then 
uh, we fell out, and then after that, yeah, after that, um, I went to the Exeter Chiefs, yeah. So then chat about that, because you ended up winning the double, right? So oh. you, you won the Prem and the Champions Cup in, in, in the same year. Yes. Just for, I think South Africans are only just now starting to come around to the idea of the URC. I mean, we know we love our Super Rugby, we love our Curry Cup. We're now kind of getting to terms with this new tournament. But we've only played one season of Champions Cup, so I think South Africans are still trying to understand the importance of the tournament. As someone who's won it, just yeah. explain. Because I know this looks frothing at the mouth. Do you um, think I'm the Bulls are going to win it I'm, every I'm, year? I think the Bulls are, go <laughs> I think the Bulls are going to win the treble. <laughs> So what the Bulls? Curry Cup. That would be special, that I imagine. That would be the dream. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, Just win the URC. I'll be happy with the URC <laughs> yeah. this season. What's it like winning that, that tour? No, yeah. Oh. So obviously as me going over, it wasn't really, I didn't understand it as most South Africans now. But then as you get started with the Premiership and you see what the champion, because then before you go over, it's kind of confusing because you play the Premiership, but then... You also play all the other countries in the in the Champions Cup. You know, it's like confused because it's you still playing Premiership, and next week you're playing Champions Cup. You know, but then obviously as you get there, it makes more sense, and uh, you know you realise you know the the Champions Cup is is then you're basically the the best club in Europe. You know, and uh, yeah, uh, we started well that season, um, but then uh, uh, COVID hit, and uh, it. Um, you know, obviously, we went into lockdown for so many months, and they came back playing uh, empty stadiums for a while. Uh, that's unfortunate. You know, we did we did the double that year. With um, we played the finals, and there was no spectators, so it put a bit of a, a damper on it. You know, it wasn't the same. I mean, because for Exeter, it's a small little down there in, in the yeah. southwest of England. Yeah, you compare yeah. it to Pochopstrom. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> when I saw that, I had a bit of a chuckle. Yeah, it's, uh, yeah. <laughs> you did your research, I right? <laughs> Yeah, well, it's true because, um, you know, it's a, it's a small town, but they've got a big university, good university. So when it's a university holiday, it's, it's quiet down in there, you know. It's, um, but as soon as there's always a lot of things going on as when the university is on, which is nice. But... Um, yeah, so it, it wasn't the same, you know, as when you, we would have won if it wasn't, if it was open, you know, not, not locked down. But um, yeah, that's, uh, I mean, just to put it into perspective, because Exeter won, did that double, I mean, um, our coach, uh, Rob Baxter, he became an OBE, you know, because of what he, what he achieved with the team for Exeter. I think we in the, the, the City Hall of Fame there, you know, uh, the, the captain, uh, Joe Simmons, he became uh, MBE, you know, it's, uh, it's just, to, you know, it's, um, yeah, it's, it's massive, um, you know, if, if, other than the World Cup, I think the second best trophy you can win is, is the Champions Cup. <laughs> well, yeah. there, you there, you go. Go. there you go. There you go. There you go. Yeah. So, no, and, and then, yeah, my first season there was, yeah, that's, I think, looking back, I didn't appreciate it as much because, you know, my first season there, we do the double, I was like, oh, yeah. this is... It's easy. It, it's easy. It's easy. It's like, and then you yeah, know, and then afterwards you realize, you know, what what kind of achievement it is, and uh, no, yeah, it's a, it was a lo lovely season. Yeah. Yeah. And with, with this new format, with the with the groups now, do you think it's better, or um, do you think do you, do you like the old format, or do you prefer the new format now? Of the URC yeah, or the, uh, no, the Champions the, Cup? The Champions oh, Cup yeah. yeah, it's a tough one. I think the simpler the format, the better. Yeah. You know, because we saw with the Super Rugby. Back in 2016, when they in 2017, when they changed, you know, to Australian, New Zealand, and Portugal, South African, African groups, Argentina, and, yeah. you know, they, and the, you know, people get confused and they don't understand it as well. So, yeah, but I mean, it's worth a try. But I think the simpler the better. Yeah, it's 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 like it's like the rugby, you know. Um, they want to keep changing the rules, but I, I feel like, you know, just leave, leave the rules for a bit so people can get used to it and yeah. just understand yeah. the game. You know, I know there's issues around the safety of players and whatever, but, you know, improve the safety of the, don't go and meddle with all the other rules, you know, just uh, and laws, because, you know, if you keep it simple like football, I mean, you, you get your three basic rules offside and, you know, don't use your hands, whatever, but, um, you know, if they, if they can do rugby like that, it's, it's, it's going to attract m much more spectators. If you understand the game, you know, you're going to watch it better, yeah. Especially so, the rules areas, to, like, yeah. speed up the game or, like, yeah. take the yeah. defenders over. There's 50-22, yeah. and like, yeah. I, I agree entirely. Yeah. 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 Okay, yeah. so then you come back. What, what brought you back to the Bulls? 
Yeah, so no, I've, oh, it, was a, it was a tough decision. I had a great time in England, you know, Exeter. I loved the club, you know, the rugby was great. I enjoyed living there. But, um, you know, as, like I mentioned earlier, you know, life goes on. Can't play rugby forever. And, uh, I mean, this is where I'm from, Pretoria. I always had in my head, you know, I'd, I'd like to play for the Bulls again, finish, finish here, you know. And, uh, yeah, so, I mean, I, I don't have any family over there. I was on my own. And, uh, yeah, it's just, uh, it's a, it's a lot of things, a lot of factors that played a role. It doesn't want this, this is why I came back with that. You know, it was a tough decision, but, um, yeah, I wanted to come back. I want to live in South Africa and uh, my family is here and, uh, and uh, you know, life after rugby, you know, start preparing for that also and, uh, you know, yeah, I'm just really happy to be back. Yeah, yeah great to have you back. Yeah, when, yeah, yeah when, when, when you want to call one of the first signings and yes, it was, ex it was exciting, had you, yeah, it was buzzing well, having your name back. If I can play yeah. one day again. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't know. It's, uh, yeah, I was excited and then, yeah, well, injuries happen, it's, it's part of the game. And, uh, you know, you've got to make the best of it. Like I say, you, you've got to, you can, it gives you a lot of time to work on your weaknesses. Uh, you can, there's always a silver lining to an injury. So, uh, yeah, hopefully you come back stronger and better, you know, better skills, better other stuff you can work with. You've got loads of time to do other stuff. That will, uh, yeah. yeah and, I'm, and, I'm, and I'm sure um, with, um, you know, um, as obviously well, one thing at a time, I'm sure you've got springbok aspirations as well. And, you know, yeah. being at the Bulls, at the, I'm pretty sure it, it helps. Yeah, that's also, it's, I mean, that also, that's another factor, you know, you think when you're in South Africa, you play for the Bulls, that's doing well. You, uh, you know, you always give yourself a better chance maybe to play for the Springboks. So, yeah, that's, that's always a, a dream. I mean, look at Dion Furi, you know, it's never too late. And, uh, yeah, that's always something work towards yeah okay you so you mentioned injuries um we had your your good mate uh Jacques the sheep duplicy <laughs> on the show last season and um he was chatting yeah. about you know his his recovery from injuries and he got quite emotional it was actually a, a brilliant episode but he also chatted quite a bit about you you had just signed for the Vodacom Bulls um, when we had that when we had that podcast and he mm. kind of waxed lyrical about who you are as a person as a player um and we just want to play this one clip yeah. for you and then, and then get you if you can hear it I don't know on that yeah, let's, see, yeah. let's see if you can hear it about to announce the signing of Giannis Kirsten arriving here, a guy that you played with there. Um, what's it like crossing paths with these guys again? I know you no, both Giannis, both played junior Giannis, rugby. Giannis is a great friend of mine. Yeah. I talk to him every day, man. We are very good friends, very, very good friends. So that's awesome for me uh, personally, for him coming, having a very good friend here, starting here on the 19 together. We have a lot in common. Um, yeah, so I think it's, I can't wait, literally, I can't wait. Uh, it's a great mate of mine. Yeah, that's really. awesome. Yeah. That's awesome. That's awesome. And, and what, what do you think he brings, like, um, on, on, on the rugby field? No, yes, he's a, yeah. he's a, look, there's no, no things about him. He just, he just works hard. Mm -hmm. That's what he does. He, yeah, he, he, he kicks 50 rocks a game, yeah. tackles Jeez. 30 tackles a game. Mm -hmm. He doesn't do the flashy work. He, he just grinds, gets the important work, though. He's a, yeah, that's, that's epitomizes Blue Bulls rugby for me. Yeah, yeah no, he played a lot of, Smoke up my chimney there. No. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna smoke up my chimney. Uh, he has to be. He has to say nice things. Uh, no, yes, sheep. Yeah, no. Obviously, we started here under 19, and um, always when we toured, you know, we were roommates usually. And uh, yeah, well, he summed it up pretty well. We, we've got a lot of things in common. We get along well. I mean, yeah, we play similar positions, but I think we do the similar play a similar type of game, you know, he also works extremely hard, work rate, you know, he's a big ball carrier, does all the dirty work, and, uh, yeah, no, I've got a lot of respect for him, and, uh, and obviously, you know, he's a big man, so you've got to respect him, otherwise, you know, <laughs> 100%, 100%, no, no, we, yeah, no, so, no, it's great, you know, I spoke to him before I came over, asked him, and he just, you know, you know he, he gives honest feedback, and, uh, you know, even him, with him being here, you know, it's, he, it's, a, it's, you want to be with guys, your friends and stuff. So, you know, it made my decision so much easier. You know, he says what it's like and, you know, everything he said was good feedback. And, uh, and uh, yeah, so it's good, it's good to be here. Yeah, so it's, it's, it makes him feel much more at home, really, you know, because a lot of things change in four years' time, I'll tell you that much. You know, because the guys back in England asked me, oh, yeah, you're going back to all your old mates and stuff, and I said, well, not really, you know, it's, it's new coaching staff, new players, there's, uh, you know, it was a handful of guys I've, I've played with, 
that was uh, that's still at the Bulls now, you know, and it's, it's younger guys coming on. It's also, you know, it's it's home, but it's yeah, just still different, different people. Yeah, I mean, yeah. Look at the so yeah, so. it's nice to have a familiar face and uh, uh, someone you get along well. Uh, with, yeah, so. yeah, yeah, Mark just mentioned the change room. Huh? When you saw the, the change of the new change room, you must have been here. It's like this is yeah, world no, class. I was eh? like, oh. <laughs> yeah, what's happening? Yeah, yeah, no, when I saw the change, I was like, all right, let's go. <laughs> <laughs> no, okay, no, I so, think yeah, a lot of change. I think we're done with the, the serious questions. Yeah. We're going to quickly do a would you rather. So it's, it's, it's an either or kind mm. of question. I'm going to ask you like 10 in a row. You tell me which either or. Okay, like oh, first okay. example, you look confused. Yeah. The first one is <laughs> beer or brandy? Oh, brandy. Okay, 100%. Like Hunting or golf? Hunting. Going out or staying in? Ah, oh, going out. Gym or practice? Uh, gym. Lock or flank? Flank. Ooh. Bucky's or Victor? Bucky's. Oh, 100%. Bush or beach? Bush. Devon or Pretoria? Pretoria. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, tackle or carry? Tackle. Yeah. Um, That's telling that. Oh, this is a risky one. Jacques Vermeulen or Jacques Dupuis? <laughs> <laughs> you don't have to answer I'll go one. with Jacques. <laughs> <laughs> Love it. Yeah. Um, okay, here's, a, here's an interesting question. Yeah. We, we, we wanted to know, do you think the average person could gain one meter on a rugby field in a carry? With the defensive system these days, I mean, I struggle too. Yeah, you have so, to be a freak. Yeah, it's, it's tough. No, no, I don't think so. Could, could the average person win a line out with 100 tries? With 100, 100 attempts, like 100 oh, attempts. 100 attempts, 100 attempts. Uh, yeah. 100 attempts. In a pro game, yeah. it's pro lots. Against Ergia, or against you. Depends, who's the hooker? <laughs> <laughs> who's throwing the ball? <laughs> well, against RG, you know, oh, there's so many factors in a line out. Yeah. But, uh, if the th say the throw is perfect every time, yeah, I think 100 ties you'll do. One. Yeah. yeah, one or two. Yeah, because, I mean, if you're attacking, uh, action is always quicker than a reaction, yeah. which is defense. Yeah. So I think after 100 ties and you go quick and you get in there and the throw is perfect, then you, you might have the chance. And, I mean, <laughs> that's a tough one because who's jumping? Yeah. Is it the short person? Is it the tall person? Yeah, no, I think, yeah, definitely a chance. If yeah. Joey was jumping. Oh no. No, no probably no. not. <laughs> and if KK well, was well, going into the line, I'd be Oh, KK, do you want to do the blind yeah, rating? Do, so, a quick blind rating. So, this is so well. So, what I do is, I'm going to give you five names, right? Yeah. It's a top five, but like you but you don't know the next name I'm going to, I'm going to say. Or the so order. You, okay. you, don't, you don't know the order. So, yeah. so you need to put them um, wherever you think they're, they're going to be placed. Okay. So, so I, I'm going to, I wanted to choose, do you want to do it locks? Old X locks or X flanks? Bulls, uh, Bulls players, legends. Okay. Yeah. Uh, which one do you want to do? Flanks or locks? Uh, let's go locks. Locks. Yeah. Okay, cool. Victor Matfield, where would you put him? I, what? Place from first to third. Yeah, but, yeah, you, but oh, you don't know what I want to say next. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, Victor, who's gonna? Oh. Well, depends. Four or five lock. Huh? Are you gonna mention locks? Just locks. I'm uh, mention both. Fours and fives. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Because I've got a favourite, I'll go with Victor. Second. Second, okay, yeah. cool. Um, Bucky's Water. One. Erke yeah. yeah. Snowman. Three. Oh. Donny Rousseau. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, see, that's a tough one. Huh? Well, mm, well, I have to go four now, don't I? <laughs> <laughs> and then, and then, and then they're going to see this video. Next time I'm and then they're going to make me humble again. Huh? Yeah. Yeah. And, and then they're going to say? Yeah, yeah. Fourth. Uh, I think it's I mean, uh, in the top five in your grade. And then uh, Philip van der Merwe obviously will be five. Yeah, yeah. okay. Yeah, yeah, no, well, I hope I don't see the, any of them. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just going to wear a hat now and walk away. Yeah. <laughs> no, you, you, can just, you can just blame it on us. You can just say, no, we, we made you do it. Yeah, I was forced yeah. into this. Yeah. I think that's, that's uh, the yeah. end of the show, yeah. 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 Thank you so much, no, man. No, thanks. thanks. Yeah, yeah. No, thanks, your time. thanks for having me. Yeah. yeah. No, I saw you guys start up in, in lockdown, basically, and 21 and... No, I've been enjoying the content. Yeah, no, it's, keep going. Yeah, what else? It's, uh, <laughs> <laughs> please, please. <laughs> no, it's great. No, I think people enjoy it. So no. Blow keep more smoke up on yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> Not too serious. You know, when it's yeah. serious, you always get stressed. But, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, thanks. Perfect. Awesome. Thanks, Janice. Thanks, Janice. All right, no, thanks, boys. Oh, oh.